Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom and I have just witnessed QPR 2, West Brom 3, another ridiculous championship entertainment fest. I just looked on the way back to the car, that is the 6th 3-2 away win I've seen this season covering the championship and God knows how many last second stoppage time goals I've seen. We had all of it today. Another five goals, another last minute winners, ridiculous mistakes, penalties, everything. Ladies and gentlemen, the championship and West Brom now close up to one point of the automatic places and it squidges up at the top a little bit more because of that 93rd minute. 94th minute, 93.30 when that went in from Jake Livermore to win West Brom the game at the end. Here is what happened. QPR, they've gone to a 3-5-2 this past um, run. Don't forget, they that's their sixth defeat on the trot now, QPR. They will be bottom well and truly of the form table after today. Lumley in goal started with three centre-backs. Uh, Furlong, Leisner, Lynch, um, Vroslek. Right wing back, Bidwell, left wing back. Luongo is sitting with Cousins and Freeman in what looks a fairly well-balanced midfield. Smith, the big guy, with Wells up front, the two of them. There, West Brom, 4-3-3. We've got used to that system from West Brom ever since those early days of the season when West Brom were tearing it up with their own 3-5-2. Johnston, Holgate right back, Dawson, Higazi, Gibbs. Settled back four there for West Brom. Field is sitting in front of the back four. I think possibly the first time I've seen him play. Uh, Livermore and Johansson a little bit ahead of him in the centre of midfield. Jacob Murphy down the right, important player in this game. Jefferson Montero down the left with Jay Rodriguez in great form at the moment up front. Down the middle. And I say it all the time though. Sooner have we taken our seats. West Brom take the lead. No real rhyme or reason or pattern to the game yet, but we got an idea of West Brom's right-hand side in this first half. You've got um, Murphy with support from um, Holgate bombing on and Livermore bunching up on that side. Remember when you're playing 4-3-3 against a 3-5-2, if you can counter-attack, there's a huge hole always behind that wing-back, especially if you can double up and... West Brom managed to do this in the fourth minute. What a start. Holgate is up supporting on the right into the box. It's on to Murphy. His shot is saved, but they've piled in. They've got men in the box early on. Montero is a bit fortuitous because it bounces right out to him. He's coming from the left-hand side to support. He hits it with the right foot and into the corner. And my timeline lights up with Swansea fans going, how has Montero scored for West Brom? He maybe didn't set the world alight there. First start today for West Brom. Four minutes in, West Brom have the lead. Um, in the fifth, Holgate is forward again into that right wing position. Fizzes it across. Um, there's man arriving at the far post. There's a Superman punch from Lumley in goal. Good start by the baggies. Full of confidence on 14. West Brom, they're putting the squeeze on the midfield. And the QPR centre half, particularly Lynch, not using the ball well. And they're struggling to play out. Looks like a systemic thing. One system not working well against the other at the start of this game. 16. Lovely switch by Murphy. Right to left. Puts Montero in. He's one on one versus Leisner. Johansson comes right over his shoulder. Overlaps. He's into the box. And Leisner makes the first of many last ditch tackles and headers and whatnot. He was the spare centre back Leisner when they were playing in a three. And I think that suited him quite well. I thought he was actually um, performing pretty well. Today on 19. Longo. Good ball up. Uh, Cousins, Hagazi um, fouls him right on the edge of the box. Dangerous free kick. We know how good Freeman is with the set plays. But this is a weak one. Couple of um, steps for the run-up. Puts that one over the top without testing uh, Johnston. A tool. Uh, Rangers forward down the right on 25. Voslek gets it over. Smith keeps it alive. Wells collects it on the corner of the box. He's actually very good in this position. But he curls this one harmlessly 
wide on 29 Higazi to Livermore now Livermore chips this one over the top it's a really good ball here Rodriguez has run off the back whose man is he they don't know they should do because there's three of them at the back there but they've let him go he's clear he just gets the angle of his run wrong so he's looking for the ball coming over and he cannot then control it when he gets ahead of him it was a lovely ball through and if he just sees that ball coming he is clean through on goal Rodriguez and on 34 minutes the first of today's glorious glorious championship mistakes here um absolute mess here from West Brom's point of view. So what happens is there's some kind of 50-50. Uh, West Brom, I think Livermore comes away with the ball. Um, maybe it was Dawson challenging Wells. Wells goes down saying, oh, I've got an eye injury, I've got a head injury. West Brom have got the ball in possession. There's no QPR players near, but the ref says head injury, stop the game. The game stops, and as it stops, so does West Brom's concentration. They're in possession, remember, when um, the ref blows up. So the ball then uh, is played back possibly by Cousins, can't quite remember, um, goes through to Johnston and the rest of it is just terrible from um, West Brom's uh, position. It goes out into Johansson, he's completely asleep, he receives the ball with his back to goal in a kind of deep centre midfield position and Luongo is alive to it, he snaffles it right off him it goes on to Wells. They're completely on their heels here. Totally, totally lost their concentration. Freeman makes the third man run. He's kind of in, in the inside left position. Fed into him in the box. He gets a really good first touch. And he is clear on goal. He goes for power. He smashes it left footed. That reliable left foot of his. Past Johnston into the net. What were they doing? West Brom go from in possession, game stops for a head injury and somehow the ball is then 30 seconds later in their net, complete loss of concentration and fingers will point at Stefan Johansson for being asleep there. They just did not get the rhythm going again after the restart. And it is 1-1, Freeman takes the goal well but there is no way from point A that the ball ends up in the back of their own net at point C. 1-1 on 34. But on 41, great chance for West Brom again. Lovely ball out from Higazi. There was a big difference between the way Dawson and Higazi used the ball as the West Brom centre-backs than how um, Leisner, uh, Lynch and Furlong did as the QPR centre-halves. They, there was a definite outlet there. And Higazi um, plays this ball into uh, Johansson. He plays it into Montero. Gibbs gets a bit of a lucky bounce, but he powers into the penalty box. He's on his left foot, so the defender dives in. Gibbs sidesteps inside him. He's clear on goal now. Um, there's someone covering from the side but he's got a free shot hits it with the right foot and it's a really good save by Lumley dives to his left stands up I suspect if that's Gibbs coming in from the other side why would he be coming from the other side frankly if he's a left back but it's just on his weaker foot is the point I'm trying to make and that maybe allows Lumley to make the save but kudos to Lumley good save by him 42 Rangers corner here falls to Luongo after being played short um he charges into the box, goes down. Dawson's behind him. Maybe Longo's looking for that. No penalty. Rangers actually build up pressure for the last minutes of the first half. Certainly territorially. Um, stoppage time here. Um, as the half-end corner stuck under the bar. We know how Freeman can do that. I saw him do them all day long. Of course, Havoc against Ipswich. Out to Furlong. His shot's deflected wide. Another corner, but West Brom see it out. And it is half-time. 1-1. Early goal from West Brom got men forward early, exploiting those areas in the 3-5-2 system where you can overload and get down the sides there, exploiting the well. Murphy looking dangerous. Montero got the goal, maybe less so he. But QPR get back into the game and get that equalising goal, although it is a little bit of a carve-up I would say, from a um, West Brom position there. Johansson with a big mistake there. Um, in we go to the second half and Steve McLaren is going to react. Uh, Smith comes off. He was wearing um, the old Phantom of the Opera mask. It didn't quite look 
at it. Today didn't get into the game at all. Really, he goes off. Eze goes on and a complete switch around. So Voslek moves forward from wing back into midfield. Uh, Bidwell moves back. We go to a back four and it's more like a 4-4-1-1 system, which when Rangers made that recovery from their bad first four games, seemed to be the system they were playing with Eze in the 10 position. I know he's a young guy and I know he's played a lot of football and maybe been taken out of the line. A fire, a 49, Wells battling well, gets a um, yard, right corner of the box, left foot curler across Johnston and just wide of the far post. Johnston did not look like he knew where that one was landing. Unlucky for Wells there. Voslek inside right position. He's in between the lines in two ways. He's come inside and he's got beyond the midfield, charges towards the box, hits it low, right footed, just wide from him. Corner. In from Johansson, though, on 56 for West Brom. Dawson throws himself at it, gets um, something on it, and over it goes. He's pretty well. Mark, you can see QPR probably, I would say, start the second half the better side. On comes Harper for Montero. I was interested by this substitution because Harper goes down the middle. Rodriguez, who you would say um, is good at being that focal point in the middle, now moves out to the left-hand side. So interesting sub by Darren Moore there. Um, Leisner chips it over to Wells. Time stands still here. He is onside. He takes too long to gather himself and across comes Higazi on the cover and blocks out his shot. He should have smelt blood then and he kind of froze a little bit. Wells and on 61 minutes, the sub has been made. I've said QPR are probably slightly the better team, but this, my friends, is the championship. And Joel Lynch is now going to join Stephanie Johansson in the pad books because this is a bad mistake by him. Ball lobbed forward. Um, it's going nowhere. There's no one running in behind. He's even got another Rangers player covering him. He does not need to make this header. He's moving backwards. He doesn't know where he is. He's lost his bearings and he heads it back into the worst place possible. Um, back into a sort of inside right position and Jacob Murphy pounces on it. He's now in a really nice position and of course the centre halves are on their heels, not a very nice distance away. Murphy gets it out of his feet, he drives at them. The rest of this is really, really good from Murphy. He engages them, he moves to the right, skips past them. It's a difficult angle but he's going to hit it early with the right foot across himself right into the corner. Lumley dives but it's a really good shot really good finish and it flies low into the corner 2-1 West Brom howls of derision from the QPR fans because Lynch did not need to head that ball but what goes around comes around the Johansson mistake in the first half pretty much similar position on the pitch actually that gets punished and Murphy punishes the Lynch mistake this time and it is 2-1 to West Brom and away we go again. 65 minutes now. Barry in for Stefan Johansson. I get this substitution. He's going to kind of tighten up that centre midfield area of the pitch, bringing in a more defensive player. Now, really, three defensive type of midfielders with Field, uh, Livermore and Barry on. Although... They can all play. We know about these West Brom players. Freeman down the left on 68. Uh, leaves Holgate on his ass there. Deep cross. And it's a last-ditch header, I think, from Hagazi with uh, Voslek uh, powering in from that right wing position. 69. McLaren, one thing you say about him, he goes for it and he gives the other manager something to think about. Hemed comes on for Wells. He's going to be in the number nine position. Asai Samuel comes in for Voslek. So Freeman now moves over to the right-hand side. Asai Samuel goes down the left and you've now got Eze playing off Hemed, who's a little bit of a bigger guy. So a kind of target man. And McLaren did go for it on 71. Freeman, another teasing free kick. Johnston loses this one and it kind of hits Barry and just trickles wide. A few accusing looks at Sam Johnston from the West Brom guys. And on 73, we have it. It's the hat-trick of Hopeless. Another ridiculous goal in this game. And it's Dawson to blame 
this time. Oh my goodness me. So it's a diagonal ball from right to left. And it's one of those ones where the cross goes in and the crowd goes, oh dear. He's overhit that one. The ball goes across and Dawson is 80-20 favourite at least to sweep this up and deal with it. Um, it's curling outwards though. That is the mitigating factor if there is one at all. Goodness me, Dawson lets this bounce and it's going to stay in. He needs to deal with it, just boot it up the line, but he doesn't. Hemed is quick to get in front of him and it's in the penalty box. So Dawson cannot be physical at all. So he takes a little stance off Hemed and Hemed is very clever here. He flips it back over the heads of Dawson. I think it's Livermore possibly covering in a turns into the box and is taken down and from a position where Dawson was 80-20 favourite to just sweep that all away, take no precautions and just boot it down the line. The ref points to the penalty spot. Yes, it is clever by Hemed to nip in front and then loop it back over. But my goodness me, clear your lines, deal with it. And the third crazy mistake in this game. Ludicrous stuff. Hemed steps up having won the penalty. Cool as you like. A slow run up. Gets inside Johnston's head. He waits for him to go and side foots it. Right footed into the net. Confident as you like. Two, two. Goodness me. Uh, 74 into the channel. Down the right for Murphy to chase now. Into the box. Holgate is in there. Can he get it under control? Yes, he can. But Leisner again. Again, impressed actually with him today. Last ditch clearance. If you want, yeah, Neil Warnock, head it, kick it, clear it. Tony Leisner is very, very good at this level. 76, great chance for West Brom here. And the forward on the right goes all the way over. Gibbs keeps it alive. He jockeys. This cross shouldn't be allowed to come in, but he does really well right over by the corner flag. Low cross in. Rodriguez comes to the near post. Um, great dummy by Rodriguez. He runs over the ball very deliberately, confuses the guys behind him. In into the middle of the box comes Murphy, left-footed, middle of the goal. Lumley down well, he smothers it. It goes a little bit loose, but it's a good save. You think Murphy there, any direction into the corners or any amount of height on that, and he is probably scoring there. But well done, Lumley. Uh, Livermore goes through as a yellow card. The game is stretching now, West Brom. A little bit more intensity into their attacks, which then does leave the door open for the odd counter-attack. And Gareth Barry is too slow in the midfield. Big tackle there by Longo. Um, it's onto a Jay Samuel. He gets into the box. He moves it. He's onto his right foot. It's a really good opening from him now. He's in the box, I don't know, 10 yards out. He's going to try and shape it into the corner with the right foot. Not enough power. Johnston gets down, makes the save. Good save. 80. Phillips comes in for field. Boost for Phillips. XQPR player. Attacking substitution by Darren Moore. We said three defensive midfielders. Now here comes a very attacking midfielder. Phillips, we know about his dribbling and his shooting on 84. Sorry, 81. Long throw. Hurled in. It bounces out. They can't clear their lines. Eze is onto it. He spins. It's falling down. It's a difficult one. He gets as much power on the volley as he can. Low down to Johnston's right. And Johnston, when called upon here, again, saves Saves well on his near post. But now West Brom are going to come strong for the end of this game. Murphy out on the left now. He swapped wings. He cuts in. Swings it in. Huge pace. There's either a deflection or a touch from the keeper. And it's just a foot wide. So close there from Murphy. 86. He's causing havoc again for Furlong. Flies past him to the byline. Crosses it in. It bounces up towards Matt Phillips. Is it going to come down? He's in the middle of the goal. If it'll come down, he can hit the shot, but it doesn't. He gets as much as he can on it, and it is deflected wide. Agonising there for Phillips. 88. The baggies are piling it on. Two or three corners here. 19 or 20 players in the box, but QPR always managing to get the final touch, the final Nick off all of it. The baggies keep the pressure on. Up goes the board. Five minutes. They force a really dangerous free kick. And would you believe it? Josh Murphy falls over and skies it over the bar. Is that all she wrote? No. This is the championship. They force them forward again. QPR seem to have got it out. Gibbs and Johnston in goal. They don't panic. Gibbs takes the throw in, throws it back, and West Brom can build up again. Down the right-hand side, it's fed 
um, into Harper and there's a bit of a mistake I have to say a Jay Samuel he's over committed here he dives right in he's pressing too hard he's either going to give away a foul or get skinned Harper brilliant back heel he sees a Jay Samuel coming he back heels it through him Holgate has made the run and now He's clear for a run into the box. He drives in there. He pulls it back. There's men forward. They've been filling the box for the last 10 minutes. It gets to Livermore. He takes one touch and he pokes it into the goal for the winner. 93 minutes and 30 seconds. Wow. West Brom take the three points. Another stoppage time. 3-2 away win. Ridiculous comeback game in the championship. How many of these have we seen this season, particularly from those top teams, Leeds, Norwich, and now West Brom doing it again. Big win for West Brom. This was their game in hand. A real chance to put pressure on those above them, and they get the late win. I have to say, not that convincing by West Brom. They played in fits and starts. I see Sheffield United and I see Norwich. They don't play in fits and starts. They're a bit more consistent throughout games. But West Brom have got quality. And so many times this season we say their players just seem to get them through this. Moments of quality at the right times. And they've done it again today. And they are well in the race for automatic. They've got a big pile up of games because of their FA Cup antics, but they are in there on, I think, 60 points with, it'll be Norwich on 63 and Leeds and Sheffield United on 60. It's going to be a great chase now for the rest of the season and West Brom well and truly in it. QPR, six defeats on the trot. They stayed in this game. They are hard to play against. Um, they make their momentum count when they get it, but they are losing, losing, losing at the moment. And I believe they're only 10 points off Rotherham down the bottom there. Look, they're not in any relegation danger because no way are those sides down the bottom there. I'm an Ipswich fan, so I've been following it closely, going to make up 10 points. But they've been so good, QPR. They'd recovered from that terrible start and that 7-1 earlier in the season against West Brom. So it would be a shame for this season to fall down on a really, really terrible run. At the end of the season. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you're a West Brom fan. Is there another gear? I think there's another gear. You're hanging in there. Hanging in there. Can they reach that other gear and push those top teams? I still would say in terms of a functioning team. I think Norwich and Sheffield United are maybe just a little edge ahead. But West Brom have got some Really, really strong players um, squad-wise. And that was without uh, Dwight Gale as well today who may have made a difference. QPR fans, what's happening with your season? What's the expectation? Is it a lost cause now, a collapse happening and you're going to be finishing down there, bottom six, bottom seven, or can you push back up into those middle areas? I'm sure QPR were... 7th, 8th, 9th, probably 8th or 9th maybe on Boxing Day after those four straight wins. But there you go. That's the championship. That's the way it goes. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video, um, give me a thumbs up. Um, please get involved in the comments. Keep it civil, as I always say. And hit the subscribe button because I will be at Derby excuse me, versus Millwall tomorrow night. So much championship content. People say to me... How do you do it? How do you keep getting to loads of these championship games? Well, when they're like that, I'll go to as many as possible. Like I say, sixth 3 2 away win I've seen this season. Not to mention 3 3 draws, 4 2 wins. This is the championship, ladies and gentlemen, and it is absolute carnage. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow night for Derby Millwall. <laughs>